Okay, okay. I'm just gonna... I'm gonna... I'm gonna play uh, Half-Life 1. Let me just check my face cam. Uh, why did it go up so fast? Uh, uh, wait a minute. Oh, okay. Uh, I'll do a hard save here and um, just struggling with my OCD. Okay, uh, so last time we got here to, to this uh, really nice outdoor spot. Uh, I remember the first time I got here, I felt an immense satisfaction with how so much of the game takes place takes place on the ground and in an indoor set and in indoor settings uh, like as we progress through black mesa trying to get to the surface and then we finally get to the surface and seeing this nice midnight blue sky and hearing the crickets you can practically feel the breeze on your face when you first get here can't you like the mountains in the distance as well uh, but regardless, uh, let's continue. Uh, oh, stop firing! Uh, uh, so, uh, let's see if I can cross this without frying myself. Yes, yeah, nice. Okay, and now I need to make these blocks. Break these boxes now to make sure that, um, uh, that I don't miss any supplies because. We are playing hard mode after all. Uh, oh, that's rather grisly, isn't it? Yeah. And um, warning: extreme heat during launch. Clear area. That tells us we're close to our destination, doesn't it? Yes. And uh, stop. As um, yes, I'm curious about this door, though. Uh, um, because uh, I've never been in it, but I'm the kind of person who I'm the kind of person who feels fascinated with game layouts sometimes, and so I I, I want to see if the other side of this door is through this uh, through this area that I came out of before. So uh, let's check. Yes, I'm guessing that's it. You know, you know where we killed the soldier behind this bunker the other day. Yeah, um, it probably is. Uh, that bunker probably is on the other side of that star. Uh, but regardless, uh, got all of the nice, tranquil, serene stars in the sky too, haven't you? Anyway, let's go. Blast danger, eh? Well, I sense there's gonna be blast danger, alright. <coughs> but perhaps not in the way you're thinking, Sonic Jim. This is rather foreboding. Oh, soldiers. Oh, my, my, um, my button didn't work uh, until until it was too late. That was just ridiculous. Uh, uh, it just shows how um, mouse buttons being unreliable can cause you can cause you. The difference can ca cause the difference between winning and losing, doesn't it? I'll just get that uh, that that um, grenade or whatever it was that I got last time. 
and then we'll uh, continue on here. Yeah, on to that fight where we got to last time. We don't have much health though, do I? There we go. Uh, that wasn't too great. Uh, and now... Um, yeah, um, it's... Um, I didn't even see that grenade comment that killed him last time either. I suppose it shouldn't be too quick to um, take cover uh, when there's grenades flying about uh, because uh, yeah, well, you know of how um, devastating flash da uh, uh, splash damage is after all. I do wish I had more health as well. So let's go. Let's try it. There we go. Mouse buttons are really bad today. They're not dead, I can tell. Uh, oh, are they? Yeah, they are. Nice. As you can see, my perception isn't too great, is it? But yeah, you cost, uh, you were a source of frustration for me, Sonny Jim, as I'd say this. Uh, I know I could have used this more, this uh, mounted gun here, but um, doesn't have been much use to me when they were throwing grenades like crazy. Or shooting grenades actually with the, the mounted um, grenade launchers on the, uh, on, on the assault rifles. Uh, well, how long have I been going for? Seven minutes. Uh, I had another black sergeant here. This really is a diverse army when it comes to when it comes to range of this, uh, isn't it? But that doesn't stop them from getting dismembered, unfortunately for them. And here's where we're going to launch our rocket from. Really interesting to think that um, when I was in that missile silo, in the earlier videos, I was under this, isn't it? But regardless, let's go. And as you can see, this is a place where the slightest slip-up can prove fatal. Oh, well, you can hear those, you can hear those soldiers really loud. We consider it they're inside there, inside there, can't you? <laughs> now, this is. This is one of the infamous. This is one of the infamous Half-Life puzzle rooms here, because you can't actually shoot or destroy those uh, explosives. You have to trip the red laser wires to do that, and um, and that's what forces you to carefully. That's what forces you to carefully um, manoeuvre. Uh, that's what forces you to carefully manoeuvre through them, like um, like Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible. Uh, uh, just able to get up. Okay. Um, I'd say the best strategy here will be to. I'm never quite sure what those soldiers say. 
I'll just show your profile or something else. Uh, I, uh, I, I've heard some people say that they think they say something else that implies that implies that the, that that implies that they aren't enjoying doing this and that they're good. But I I always think but I always think the same. But I always think. Or I always think to say it ought to show we will prevail. This is getting annoying, though, so it's time for them to die. And me as well. And so now I've got to do this puzzle again. And um, this time I'll try the, the uh, um, revolver here. It was hard enough last time to uh, um, to uh, to uh, manoeuvre these boxes into the right positions as well. Still, we've done it now. I'll just say, they say something about civilians, don't they? Um, um, like they don't want to kill civilians or something. Yeah. Oh no. Yeah, that was terrible as well. I'd say uh, really that um, my best chances are with the grenade launcher. Just need to not be so slow with it like I was last time. Stealth doesn't always work after all with these soldiers. I didn't sign on for this shit. Monster sure, but the males reward this operation anyway. Um probably people who wanted to get you killed. Oh, that's how it should go, isn't it? Took me enough times, but oh well. They're, they're very big and they're very big and muscular and bulky compared to scientists. These soldiers aren't they? I thought when I've seen people playing um, Half Life, saw and and the soldiers have had more of the. And the characters have had more traditional models, like, but more like what they were in the 1998 version of Half-Life. I thought the soldiers look even bigger and more muscular and bulky than they do in this version as well. But then again, it's probably those big backpacks and the, and the armour on their chests that made them look really big as well, isn't it? Although, naturally, soldiers are probably going to be bigger and more muscular than scientists anyway, really, aren't they? But, oh well, time to get to work with the corpse disposal duties. Wonder if these can be destroyed. Maybe not, but it always makes me feel guilty when I smash up electronic equipment and it sparks like that, as if to imply that it's being destroyed beyond repair at that point. And speaking of being destroyed beyond repair, it seems like this uh, uh, retinal scan is never going to be usable again with all this blood obscuring its uh, scanning field, isn't it? Such a shame! All this expensive material, all this expensive um, <coughs> equipment being ruined. But finally, we can heal ourselves. Unfortunately, not to the level of health that I had before. So I'm still in not out of the woods yet in regards to in, in regards to. Um, in regards to staying alive and all, but I suppose it's more entertaining sometimes if I'm dying a lot and getting frustrated, isn't it? More entertaining for all you viewers at home, yes. 
this is a very swell play, swift of lining, gift of computers and equipment and everything is and says Look, I'm inside the world. No, well, almost inside the world. I'd find this scary in real life. Imagining myself being in the in the Earth's core, and I'd find that terrifying with all the hot lava inside. It remind me of the, like being inside a miniature sun or whatever. Very scary. And why is oil splattering all over the place when I'm hitting this and then showing up on the wall as green slime? Seems rather strange to me, but oh well. I guess you shouldn't question game logic, should you really? Not if you want, not if you want to immerse yourself in the experience and have fun, so to say. Anyway, let's go. Uh, and here we are in the in the launch uh, room where we launched a rocket from. But first, recognise this place, anyone? I know I do. That's. Uh, that blast us on one of the lay levels of the silo. You know where that bunk, where that first bunker was, when I, which I destroyed while Barney was accompanying me. And um, I, uh, and I think this is a uh, coming out of that bunker. Uh, through the other doors. So yeah, I find these surveillance pictures very interesting. It's a shame there's nothing moving on them though, isn't it, to give us that real sense of immersion. But oh well, time to launch our rocket now. Be really good if we saw it launching out or moving out of the air, wasn't it? There we go. I wonder if my smiley face will be on it. Doesn't look like oh, dazzling and a blind now. Blind it is. Is the rocket still dead up in these pictures? Can't really tell. Yeah, it looks like it is. That's kind of funny, isn't it, really? And no, you can't take a shortcut out of these windows by jumping out, unfortunately. Ah, uh, we've got music now. So that's the flight path of the rocket, I think. Uh, going into orbit. And apparently it's crucial that the rocket gets into orbit so that some kind of a satellite code or whatever can be transmit it in order to shut down the um in order to shut down the gateway portal or whatever to the uh, zen to the zen dimension where all the creatures are coming from so according to this victory music we have accomplished our mission and now I can sit here and rest and wait for them and wait for rescue. Yeah, right. Uh, because obviously the military aren't going to buy it if we tell them that we've managed to solve the problem, are they? And besides, I've killed so many of them that they're not going to forgive me, probably, so... Unfortunately, I've got to stay on the run, it seems, and keep um, traversing the facility, um, hoping to find safety and shelter. I have never noticed this down there, because uh, that's actually... Stop firing! Because that's actually where we end up going. Uh, and, so, and I didn't know it was directly below this train turntable type thing here. 
That was most intriguing indeed. Intriguing trees, I suppose you could say. Um, but now let's go down and you'll see what I mean. Stop! Firing. Uh, uh, um, yes, see, that's where we were up there just then. And, uh, yes, now I've got boxes to destroy here. Uh, so that's um, destroy them and see what goodies we can get our hands on here. Nothing behind these electrical boxes here. These rather imposing electrical boxes. No. It reminds me of when I was out on my long walk yesterday and I was um, looking for all kinds of improvised seating because I was so tired. I had pains in my stomach and I was groaning and gasping for breath as I was walking and I was sitting on whatever improvised chairs I could find like fences outside fields and trees and any tree stumps that were somewhat flat on top so that I could and uh, so that I could be comfortable on them and I even pondered sitting on electrical generators similar to these but I didn't have the guts even though I was so tired and exhausted but now Let's take a ride on this rather fancy looking train here and hope that it won't malfunction and spin out of control. Like so. Uh, that wasn't too bad I suppose. Can't remember if I had any uh, suit power or not. I wonder if the soldiers blocked this off or... No, I think it was just a case of this track being broken. Maybe the soldiers uh, sabotaged it, though, I don't know. After all, they accused me of sabotaging the... I didn't know this opened. They accused me of sabotaging the Black Mesa experiment, isn't they? So, they probably wouldn't be above sabotaging things themselves with all this stuff going through their minds and all, would they? And I wonder what happened to his neck. You don't suppose my explosive that I fired just then spun his neck around and broke it, do you? With the sheer concussive force and all. No matter, now he's totally broken, not just his neck. And now we're on the, I didn't notice just then, but now we're on the apprehension chapter of the game, aren't we? Uh, where we don't quite encounter as many soldiers, thankfully, as they have been the bane of my half-life existence so far on hard difficulty. But now we're faced with rather treacherous, hazardous, puzzle-like environments, aren't we? And I don't really remember exploring up here much in the past either. Uh, I just remember falling down quickly, falling betrayed, or I was just on out of loyalty and compassion for it. And blood seems splats everywhere in this game, doesn't it? Oh, oh, oh never mind. Uh, I was thinking that the uh, you ladder's know, broke there. Uh, but now I don't want to fall down there uh, just yet. I want to go down on my own. On my own um, conditions. My own terms and conditions, yeah. And yeah, so... Um, Let's be going down. We ouch. That wasn't much of a fall. Well, I'm hearing so many sounds, and I stop. I'm hearing so many sounds, and it's keeping me on on edge here. And I don't like, don't necessarily like the feeling. Seems like we all need to descend further in order to get to the bottom of the situation. No pun intended. Uh, 
is a disorder of a uh, ominous uh, pattern here. I always associate this yellow and black stripe pattern with danger for annoying off, or maybe hazardous material, or maybe hazardous um, environments or whatever. Of course, if that's what they're all, if that's what they're naturally intended to signify, then that just made me look rather stupid, didn't it? Like I don't actually know what yellow and black stripes stand for. Or it wouldn't be the first time that I've made myself come off like an idiot, so I digress. Let's take a dip in the water now. Let's see what we can do oh, no. now. There's um uh, which is so the strategy that um the, the most common strategy when when you come across leeches underwater is to swing is to swing your crowbar like a crazy master at them and hope for the best. You know, with them being small. Good thing this this train line is it frying me, though, isn't it? Anything on this um, platform here? Now, as you can see, I like to explore these days, don't you? Anyway, I'm underwater now, so I'd best best not dally about any more than I need to. Need to find it uh, like so. Uh, too much dallying about uh, and not enough haste in traversing the environs trying to make progress and find out where I need to go and there's tons of these leeches in here and uh, maybe trying to fight them is futile but I never was one to concede grace gracefully was I that was probably why I ended up um, that was probably why I ended up making a fool out of myself so much in life trying to fight the inevitable as is often the case with me. I wonder and now up and down this oh I know what's down here but let's go down anyway. And uh, as you can see in this game, you don't get long before you start drowning, so... Oh no, don't panic. Uh, yeah, there we go. Phew, that was, a, oh, that was a, a relief, wasn't it? Anyway, uh, we've got three minutes left now, so... Um, I'm not sure um, where I'm going to stop this time. Oh nice, we've got some grenades here. But yeah, it doesn't look, feel good being in this room with all these ge electrical generators while being underwater, does it? So, we need to get out here as soon as possible. And, um... Oh, so, opening this door here pushes that... Um, that generator away oh, that was blocking this door here, like so. And now we can get out of this. And so, if we go this way, and then up this passageway, we're out of this underwater labyrinth, like so. Isn't there a nice relaxing sound? That water dripping sound. Uh, did you see that? That is what everyone fears. That is what everyone who plays Half-Life fears the most. The great underwater monster. The icky something or whatever it is. As you can see, my grenade aim is quite terrible when trying to kill this thing as well. And it's never good sliding around uncontrollably when there's barnacles about, is the Watch out, barnacles are about! Hopefully, Jeremy Beadle in the afterlife will appreciate that reference to him just then. Ooh, 
Yeah, yeah so I'd say we should climb up this ladder first and see what we can find, ascertain. Oh, did you see it? They said it was home from the Challenger Deep, but I'm positive that beast never swam in terrestrial waters until a week ago. There's a tranquilizer gun in the shark cage, but I'm not sure it would work on this species. You're welcome to try. Oh, uh, sure, yeah, because I'm the gullible one who's willing to do all the fighting for you scientists. Aren't I? Uh, seems familiar that sometimes in the past this writing has been readable, but maybe I'm just not remembering properly with the stress of the situation. Anyway, um, uh, now that we've found a nice place where we can haul up and prepare for the nightmarish battle that awaits us, I'll, um, Stop the video. So, I'll see you all when I see you, DJ fans and fans alike. Let me just say, if, uh, uh, and um, yes, I'll catch you all. I'll catch you all later, friends. Goodbye.